Hello and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, and today in the arena we are playing Rafine, Scheming Seer in Historic Brawl. Since I started my Historic Brawl vacation, actually since I decided, since I started like my serious Historic Brawl kick around the time of my streamathon in December, a certain shadow descended upon the format, and people have posted in comments and they've posted on Reddit, dude, they're gonna quit Historic Brawl because of Rusko, Clockmaker, Rusko. Now, I understand Rusko. I was one of the first people to play it and make a video about it. And Rusko is undeniably fun to play. That is why people will keep playing Rusko. Because if you are, if that's the kind of deck that clicks for you, and it clicks for a lot of people, they will keep playing it. Drawing seven cards is sweet. Doing it more often is sweet. And Rusko is very, very good at it. But there are so many ways to beat Rusko that I really struggle with reading people saying that they're going to quit Historic Brawl because of it. And one of the decks that I have a very high win rate against Rusko with is all of my tempo decks. Rafine is one of the best tempo decks you can play because it runs some of the strongest colors of white and blue, but it also runs a lot of cheap creatures and keeps the opponent from doing what they want to do. Now, you can run Rafine in a few ways in Historic Brawl, and there are a lot of people who like Rafine Reanimator, for example, or they just fill Rafine with a million one-drop flyers, kind of like an Esper version of Gix, Yawgmoth Praetor. But I just take this kind of middle road where we're very low curve, we run a lot of very disruptive creatures in the mana base, like Thalia, Tithe Taker, Strict Proctor, Hushbringer, etc. We use the Rafine Connive to make them into serious threats, and we run a really low curve of good interactive spells that keep the opponent completely off balance. Cards like Aether Gust, which are really good when the opponent plays certain colors, but if they don't play those colors, your Commander Rafine is an outlet to just discard them for plus one, plus one counters instead. And yeah, like any of the big control decks in Historic Brawl, Teferi, Rusko, Bolas, this deck gets under them with amazing resiliency, and it can win a lot of games. So if you're sick of losing to those decks that just kind of do their big controly thing, and you want to get some creatures and attack underneath them, Rafine is one of the best ways to do it in the format. It's a very powerful deck, and I think you'll enjoy it a lot. Watch the games if you like to see those decks squirm, cry, wriggle, and writhe, but ultimately succumb to the schemes of the scheming seer and to those of you who enjoy a little bit of esper nonsense and trickery in this particular video you're cool now we're going to dive in and let this rafine nonsense begin all right we are on the play against Helana and elena this hand does things it will be great the paladin class not the greatest in this matchup, but when we level it up, it can really help. The Aether Gust and the Memory Lapse could be very useful, and the Denic, if it gets some plus one, plus one counters, could be really good. All right, let's go, Denic, to the battlefield. The opponent with some ramp, so they could play Helana and Elena next turn. Should we take a turn and gust them? No, nope. let's just get this deck cooking. They put counters on things, we put counters on things. It's a fair trade. So in this matchup, I'm not enthusiastic about Swan Song or Duress. I think Duress is worse than Swan Song, so don't really want to put mana into taking something from their hand when they're just putting more and more threats on the battlefield. All right, the commander is here, so we probably need to take a turn to gust it. We need to draw some land, too. Fortunately, we have Rafine. Those are tapped lands, but at least they're lands. So I can't gust and hold up um, another counter. I think we're going to let the Swan Song go. I'll let the portal go too. Yeah, I've got double blue without it. So, when do I Aether Gust? In the draw step? They could have Veil of Summer, they could have Snakeskin Veil, they could have so many things. Yeah, I think I just try to time walk them and make them play it again now, even though they can just put it on top, 
redraw it, and then recast it, which is very bad for our memory lapse. An untapped land would have done wonders there. Yeah, but I think that's the right play. Otherwise, if they protect it, it's a bit of a blowout, and then they can definitely shift the tempo of the game. Whereas if they just replay, if they spend this turn just playing Halana and Elena again, meaning they're carry added a 5-5, we're not really afraid of it yet. Okay, that's an additional plus one, plus one counter every time they make counters. That's kind of messed up. So now they have a 6-6. Six, six. We have to draw removal. This also has reach, so we have to keep that in mind for Rafine. We're in a, basically we're in an awkward race that we do have to win. Oh, and, and really want two cards here. Do we want to play Kaito? I think we just play the hanger back walker. I think Kaito is too slow in this matchup. Then next turn we power up Paladin class probably. Or I guess we could do that now. And then next turn go for the double strike, but they do have like Halana and Elena can block. So yeah, I think we just play the cave, play the walker for one, and turn that into a thopter after a block, and we'll see how powerful the opponent's play is. This says, if you control a creature with power four or greater, it does include itself, so they have access to seven mana. Okay, it's a good card to counter. And that will do it. The opponents might do scary things, but if you have the tempo, you can usually beat them. Niv Mizzet. We gotta go hard and we've gotta go fast, because this can't be countered and it will take over the game. Our hand is pretty good, though. We're probably not leading on the Mind Spike. We're probably playing it the turn that we play the Rafine off the Mox Amber. But that requires the opponent not countering Rafine, so this could get a little dicey. <laughs> Just kidding. All right, so they did tap. Uh, let's go ahead and play the Adanto Vanguard. They have a foretold card on board. Adanto Vanguard, pretty hard for them to deal with, but, you know, they get that extra life. Where's your blue? Who would play this deck without blue? It's not going to be good when Rafine comes down. I can promise you that. Yeah, they're, they're looking at the Vanguard like my removal spells. All right, I'm going to get the Amber down so I can definitely make the mana. Play the Rafine. That way, if they cast Heated Debate or something on Rafine that can kill it, even through the ward, we still get a chance to cast this Mind Spike off the Amber. Ooh, fires. Okay, so see, that works out. I mean, we don't love that this happened to Rafine, but they don't get to draw the card, and we got to cast the Mind Spike off the Mox Amber. And next turn, we have Mural. That can make it produce mana again. Look at all these things. <laughs> Look at all of these things that don't kill a Danto Vanguard. I'm going to take the Fire Prophecy because they probably want to help fix their draw with it. I'm surprised, though, they kept a hand with no blue. Maybe they didn't realize it. Come on, opponent, draw blue source. Make this a game. Okay. Here's Mural. Once she hits, you can't cast spells on this turn, so you better take your action now. Uh, I pay. <laughs> it doesn't tap it. It's not Seasoned Hollow Blade. By the way, fun fact, this is a soldier. So is this. Misery Shadow? Not so much. There's the blue source. Mizzix's Mastery can cast something from the graveyard, but that doesn't help very much here. Electrolyze, I will pay. They're trying to kill me this way. <laughs> I mean, it's a line. I've seen it. It happened in Standard when this card was legal. Here's Rafine. Here's the attack. Let's make a giant mural. 
All right, what's the discards? The Brain Maggot, the Tithe Taker, the Shadow. I definitely have too many lands. I love the Limvala. The Tithe Taker is great. The Shadow is probably the least likely to be good, but the more mana we get, the better it gets. The Brain Maggot? Uh, yeah, we want the Maggot. All right. I get one more turn, probably. For Mural here goes the distance with these soldiers paired up with Rafine. So let's see, can they deal with her? They did hit another blue, so they're one blue from Niv. But Niv at this point just has to jump in front of a bus named Rafine. Oh, that's it's kind of a concession at this point. Just going to draw some cards because they know they can't do it on my turn. And the foretold card was Allrun's Epiphany. Did you have fun this match? I wish they had blue a little sooner, but sure. This hand has no white mana, so the classic three color problems. We're up against Asika. A deck that has no lack of the ability to tilt me. Um, do we keep this? We can go black, white, blue, and we don't have mana problems, but this Fatal Push is really bad, and so is this Infernal Grasp, and this Hushpringer doesn't do anything. Okay, still not great mana, but we can put away Go for the Throat, and at least we have a very proactive hand. And if we draw the right land, we're in good shape. Is that the right land? Yeah, that can be the right land. Lead on Wanderer, next turn... Black mana, play Scrounger or Skyclave Shade. And then the next turn, play Rafine. Although I would have loved to get down the Vanguard instead. Mausoleum Wanderer, sneaky. So good in this deck. When combined with Rafine's ward, it usually means they can't just removal spell the Rafine when they want to. Although ramping on the play is a good step for them to get to that place. Scrounger or Shade? Shade or Scrounger? I like the Scrap Heap Scrounger because it can come back at instant speed potentially, so we can also hold up counterspell mana. So I like it, the Scrounger in my graveyard better than the Shade. Olus, okay. Rafine. We've got a discard a non-land, but that should be doable. How about miscast? I don't know. The miscast seems like it's going to be important. I've just got that feeling. I'm going to drop the Vanguard. Big turn for the opponent, but they can't drop the bridge off the idol, which is why I'm kind of surprised it's in the deck. A lot of other ramp spells they could play for two in a green base deck. Jaya. What's that gonna do for you? Make a monk? Okay. Eh, it's okay, I guess. Alright, let's get some value. The Pact of Negation might be interesting soon, but not right now. We have to put a counter on the Rafine, but that shouldn't that shouldn't be as hard as apparently it is. All right, uh, let's drop the Pact of Negation and the Basic Planes. Yep, yeah, the opponent can defend Jaya just fine, but hopefully it gets easier next turn. Let's see what they can do. Exile top two, and they see Sarkin. So this has got to be the Planeswalker variant of Asika. They take the land, so they're probably going to cast their bridge, which miscast doesn't help with. But I'm hoping they feel like they have to play a sweeper instead. Nope. All right, got to draw a solution. We do get to look at a lot of cards. Ooh, Aether Gust. Wait, that hits the bridge. Oh, that's a solution. I love this. All right. Um, let's send some pain in Jaya's direction. These two will make sure that Jaya dies. Rafine could also attack face, just to see if the opponent will block it. And then we have to put counters on the Toulouse. 
So Proctor can go. Um, memory lapse is good. We could get rid of the lands. Yeah, we just need one counter on to lose here. All right, Jaya down. Sorry, Mike. Didn't mean to punch you. You win some, you lose some. All right, gust the bridge. And they go to the top where they'll probably try to cast it again. And now we have the memory lapse solution. And this is where Rafine's card selection is really amazing. Okay, they're going to play Teferi instead. Do I care? Go ahead. I'll just attack it. That's no problem. This isn't my first time being the hero. Time to improvise. They did kind of read that we probably have a counter spell for a Sika, but with some patience, I think we'll be fine. Oh my gosh. Oops, all planeswalkers. Bolas can potentially transform next turn, but that just means we attack Bolas. And we get to use our mana here to get back the Scrounger. Do, they, do you think they have any spells? I'm starting to question it. All right, so Teferi can minus to phase. So we have to attack it with at least two things. It can also go up. So I guess three things. What is frustrating is we have to keep spending our turn on killing these Planeswalkers. So if we do like this, I don't think the opponent wants to block with Bolas anyway. I think I should give them the option to save Teferi and I should start hitting their face. I'm going to be pumping the Scrounger here anyway. All right. Yeah, let's start some pressure on the face. I really want this to lose to die. So it's Plowshares. They do not have the mana now for the miscast. I'm glad I saved it. Now the opponent could phase it. Yeah, okay. Now they just have one loyalty. Are they going to block the shade? Probably not. So all they did was prevent me from getting that effect for a turn. Do I hold? All right. Ready to lapse their next thing. Although they might flip the bolus, but if they do, I'm not even sure... Like, what's it going to do? Draw two? Then I attack it and kill it? No big deal. They get to... They could put a Planeswalker onto the battlefield, but none of these will protect Bolas very well. Our board presence is too overwhelming. If they can exile this, it has six cards under it. Okay, they're going for Ashiok. Let's counter that. Because if they bounce the to lose and I lose all those cards it's too much and that's game we are on the draw against Bolus Dragon God uh yeah the Proctor isn't good the Lamvala isn't good hopefully Rafine can turn those into real cards the important thing is we have the right colors and Adanto is probably good hey we drew a one drop that's awesome and here's the power of mana confluence Let's curve out. All right, opponent on the ramp plan. Apparently with a tough decision on their Cold Steel Heart. It's usually just black in Bolas, but they go with red. Vanguard, definitely Vanguard. So we could pay for life. And if we did, this would get a plus one, plus one counter. I kind of forgot about that combo. I haven't seen that in forever. And it might be worth it in this matchup. Whereas in most matchups, I would not do that. Okay. Wouldn't have mattered. Wow. That is... That is pathetically soft. We are on the play against Uro. I don't know what this username means, but it looks like it would make an excellent curse word, which would describe an Uro player very, very well. Now, I, of course, as a blue mage, have played Uro. So I speak from 
uh, a position of experience. We are toxic gamers. If we are the Uro deck that just counters everything, look at that. Of course we are. Of course we are. But we got in that hand, didn't we? Let's take the reject. Can potentially play around Jwari if they just sit with the Jwari open. Okay, they just play it on turn one, expecting us to play around it. With that many lands, though, I would have probably held it. I think I'd play this castle on turn one. And they're trying to draw a new counter spell, but we're going right back into their hand. Because we are cool like that. Mystical Dispute. Easy take. This is the ideal opponent for a card like Kitesail Freebooter. You know, you want to play against Emery, Baral, Uro, counter-heavy decks that don't run removal colors. You know, no black, no red. When you play against them, often you take the card and they don't get it back for a very long time. So, do you think the opponent top decked the counter spell? Maybe they did. I mean, that's Esper Sentinel. It's a pretty good card to drop. But I think we just go for the Rafine. Because if they have the counter spell and we draw a land next turn, we can drop the Mural and just lock them out. Resolves. Swing. Draw Curse of Silence, which is better against Uro than the Humiliation. Humiliation not great against Uro because it kind of, it can even if you humiliate it, it's still a 6-6, and it can often head back to the command zone to remove perpetual effects any time because of the way the card works. Opponent did not use their Shark Typhoon. I'd be digging for answers. They tap out. All right, this might be the Mural turn. Did they just not play their Field of Ruin? Oh yeah, never mind. So they were sitting with something that they could play that turn and didn't. What is it? What holds priority there? Ox Amber? I'll know it when I see it, I'm sure. All right, attack first. Let's start working on Rafine. We find land. This one can go. And then what's another card that can go here? All these cards are pretty good. I think if I wash away the Uro, that's better than cursing the Uro. This can be black. And now we lock them out of our turns. Unless they find a way to deal with the Shield of Argive. They cannot cast spells on my turn or activate the abilities of artifacts creatures or enchantments. I think that includes the cycling ability of Shark Typhoon, but I'm not positive because is it an enchantment when it's a card in hand? Seems silly. Ah, the great nemesis, Narset. What a pain in the butt this card is when you connive. No, I'll discard that portal. It's fine. So what we don't want to do is attack with everything and be forced to discard everything. But yeah, this is this is the great problem. Fortunately, they don't have mana to make a shark token. I was not prepared for this. If I play that first, we get an extra token. So that was a mistake. Play your Esper Sentinel and other soldiers before you attack with Meryl. But yeah, we drew the right cards for this matchup. These are all the things that the hardcore control decks absolutely hate. So in many ways, we're a deck that plays blue, black, and white, but we feed on the other decks that play those colors. Joint Exploration. Would you like to pay the one? Guess so. They could still find River's Rebuke, but we're ready. We are prepared for their six mana spell. They would have to defend it with a counter. And if we find another land, they have to defend it with two counters. And that's the right land. Just going to play it now before I forget. Okay, this priority hold is probably for the Shark Typhoon. So I think they can still cycle it. But they can't cast no spells. <laughs> I 
They've got their rope out on my turn with Mural on the field. Come on now. Come on now, opponent. There we go. Let's pump up the Esper Sentinel. Make it harder to pay the one. And let's just discard all the things that aren't the two counter spells that we can hold open. Are you going to pay the six? They finally did it. They finally cycled the shark typhoon. Times have gotten dark and desperate indeed. Curate. Pay the six. No. All right, what still works here? Whelming Wave might be their dig. Eh, we know it won't get there. Uro. Uro. I pay. <laughs> ah, we sucked the soul right out of the soulless. Kinnon. The enemy. Um, Storm Tamer isn't usually great against Kinnon. The Proctor? Depends, right? Sometimes their big expensive hits have powerful ETBs, but normally not the creatures themselves. I just don't know if I can... Am I supposed to mulligan a hand on the draw that doesn't have removal, but has the mana I need? I think I do have to mulligan it. Still no removal. Still no removal. Does that mean I go again? Yeah. Aether Gust? It counts. All right. I mean, here we are. We are down a color, so we're going to have to solve that. But we're off to as bad a start as you could expect. We'd hope for much better. All right, we drew a blue source. That's something. So this can be... We go blue, and then we go white, and then we go black. Here comes a mana dork. There's always one. Okay. Uh, do we gust it now, or do we try to gust the cannon? I think if we wait and try to gust the cannon, they probably just redraw it. I think we're just supposed to gust the dork, to be honest. Don't let them counter the aether gust. And just slow them down. Try to get time to land our Rafine. Get some card selection. Try to find good answers. Wow! Man, going second is hard. It's super pronounced in the Kinnon matchup, where you're just down like 50 mana to three if you don't do something on turn two, just to prevent it. And if you're doing something to prevent it, like you're not, pro you're not moving your game plan. And then of course, next turn, they're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 mana. If we don't draw a removal spell right here. And they might have a counter spell even if we do. Oh, you, you are just on time, aren't you? Opponent. So they have Tamiyo's safekeeping, I think. It's the only thing I can think of that just sits there on priority right now. Curse is late. So now we're just hoping they whiff, which is a beautiful feeling. Let's... Yeah, let's play Everheart. Tax their draws a little and play Freebooter. We drew it this turn, so it gets a cost reduction. Opponent's sitting there staring at their Tamiya's safekeeping. Oh, they're Boseju. Okay, well, we whiff. Sad. We didn't draw this this turn, right? We'd have to play it for zero. If we had drawn it this turn, we'd get a reduction. We could play it for one off just one mana. Yeah, okay. 
Like, did we even play a game of magic? I tried three mulligans. I guess I should try four. We are on the play against Uro. Back in the comfort zone, torturing control decks. Let's go. Let's go ahead and name black here since we have an underdog. And another blue source, not necessary. Not expecting, like, I would have to play Man Godless Shrine there and hold up Mana Tithe if they were a black commander just because of Dark Ritual, which is kind of insane, but here we are. Let's go for the hand. It's as good a time as any. If they swan song it, that is, that is Charmin Extra Soft is what that is. We are playing against Omnath, Locus of Creation, Landfall. This hand is all the colors. Uh, it's good. It's good. On the play, I love it. We can get Aspirant working on turn two. Maybe we're supposed to Brain Maggot, but it feels like Luminarch just beat him down. Omnath can gain so much life, but it's slow. It's a much slower commander now than it used to be. Four mana to five is a big difference. So I think we just go for damage. If Omnath starts cooking and hitting land drops every turn and it starts gaining all that life, things become so much harder. So we've got into the north on two. Lane is wide open for Rafine. Get the Alpine Meadow. They've got the snow duels just for their into the north fetchings. You know, start putting counters on Rafine to attack in the air. Even though we miss a damage this turn, we'll get it back, I think, in the future. And right now, I just want to curve up to Time Warp. I don't think I want to play Construct next turn, although it's good value. So I'm just going to discard it. The only problem with Containment Construct, it forces you to play at sorcery speed and telegraph what you're going to cast a little bit. Okay, they're going to blow up their own land to fetch two lands. Yes, yes. Classic. Do they have a land to play for the turn? That's going to be important. Two basics and... Yep. All right. They're going to be right on the Omnath level next turn, which means they're ahead of Pact of Negation. That is not great for us. Keep building up the flyer, but though it looks like we're discarding a lot of land this turn. Didn't find a counter for the Omnath, so it's going to come down. I guess we'll jump in that hand. And we get... Oof. Well, there's no more land. They do get two draws at it with the Omnath resolving. The rip apart... It's a cheap removal spell. It's the only cheap removal spell. And then everything else is kind of an expensive creature. Also, Return to Nature is just two mana. Get rid of the Brain Maggot. But Rip Apart's the most versatile, so I'm going to take it. <sighs> okay. Here comes Omnath. But next turn, Time Warp. They do hit the land. Oh god, it's a doubler. But what else can they play this turn? The, re the Return to Nature. And the Rip Apart. <laughs> yeah. They got exactly what they needed. Heartbreaking. On Tawara. If I bounce the Omnath and they have to play it again, I can pack it. This creates a window to put counters on the walker so it can keep attacking.
All right, big tempo hit. Still holding time warp though. I think they have a land and they held it. Not positive though. Hangerback Walker, the more counters it has, the better, because when it dies, we get those back as Thopters. So if they have a board wipe, and we suddenly have four Thopters, and then we replay Rafine, everything's good. Ren and Seven. Big reachy tree folk. Gross. But we can put counters on Rafine so it survives the attack. And we have the time warp. So I think we've got it. So here goes Scrounger. I guess I'll keep the miscast because I can. The block is going to bury them. They go to five, but here come those Thopters. Let's go ahead and have Miscast open in case they have Pact of Negation. They can block, right? Nope, we just put the counters on a Thopter and we got it. All right. Whew. Omnath scared me there. On the draw against a fairy who slows the sunset, there are a lot of hands we could have. This has got to be one of the worst hands we could have with the right mana. We need some disruptive elements against a fairy, and we just don't have them here. Humiliate, but it sits right on the curve with all the creatures we want to play, so that's rough. But we also have good mana, so I'll keep it. Ghostly Pilferer, a card I love in this type of deck. Whenever the opponent casts their commander, you draw a card because it's a card cast from somewhere other than their hand. The unblock ability, really good with Rafine. The ability to draw some cards becomes pretty good with Rafine when, after we've played out most of our hand. Fatal Push, not the draw. But hopefully Rafine can turn it into something better. My goodness, is magic on the draw hard? All right. Humiliate or no? I think I'm supposed to get the pilfer down, to be honest. What mana symbol is the most prevalent in our hand? White? And then next turn, if they hold open mana like they want to counter our commander, we can go for bag and humiliate. Tranquil Cove, no play. No surprise for me. Let's see what you got. All right, would have resolved. Too bad. Um, the Seagate Restoration could be a huge problem. Whereas the Elspeth Conquers Death. It specifically hits Rafine, and that's it. Maybe we can play around it. But the Seagate Restoration, if they play Teferi here and then they untap, uh, I guess there's still a few turns from it, aren't they? All right, I'll, I'll take the Elspeth. Here's the bag. Bag, a really fun card with Rafine because whenever we discard a card, uh, it can go under the bag and then we can potentially get all the cards we discard back. All right, they have a mystery card, but they're slamming to fairy, which means the mystery card probably isn't great. And we get our card draw from the pilfer, which feels so nice. And there's a thought seize. And they're ticking down, which means we can attack this to fairy and resolve our Rafine, and we can thought seize the card they pick. So this is going better than I expected it to. Uh, decline on the pay to. Right now, we need some tempo. Rafine. Attack. I'll discard Fatal Push. Goes in the bag. Who knows? We might need it back. This is hardly my worst defeat. Forsaken Crossroads, black, untap. Five, three cards in the graveyard, so still a ways from his Kanta flipping. 
And we see Sublime Epiphany and Day of Judgment. Day of Judgment gone. You can keep that expensive, expensive spell. Sublime Epiphany. And hopefully we can get under it. Find like a Spell Pierce or a Swan Song. They do have this card. Watch out for Ganjo, Seed of the Empire. But we have Luminarch Ass Pirate to get around it. Do I take a draw? We know what their play is. We know the Pilfer can't get around it, but Rafine can. I'm going to do it. Selfless Savior, that changes things. That lets us attack with both things. And then if we hit an untapped uh, black, an untapped land, we can free boot the Epiphany. Pay the one. I think they will, <laughs> but make them click it. Land, excellent. Packed, excellent. I think I'll put these in the bag of holding. Sixteen life. Free the booty. And they have a torrential gear hulk. <laughs> Let's take the sublime epiphany. <laughs> Can't take the gear hulk. They're on five for his Kanta. If we get them to shock out the land and then we pack the gear hulk, I think that will be game. Don't think they will recover. Oh, good choice doing it now, though. Very good choice doing it now. What does this get? Nothing. It gets nothing. Um, in that case, we let it resolve because this can become unblockable with a discard and these fly. We don't care. Us versus Niv Mizzet Reborn. Five color control, probably. This hand is great. I love the Rafine's Tower. Makes me feel warm and fuzzy to think that our mana will be functional. And then on turn two, probably on the play, you want to drop the Ass Pirate. All right, get the cave down before it becomes a tapped land. Begin the counters. Let's put some pressure on this opponent. 25 life is, it's amazing how much that five life does. Kind of eliminates a lot of aggressive strategy from the meta. So two open mana can probably counter Rafine. At least that's what these decks usually build for. Since they might have a removal spell that they want to use in response, I think I'm going to just go to combat Put a counter here and attack, and then Inquisition after, in case they respond to the Inquisition with removal. Do we fight for this? If they counter this, we probably fight for this, right? Nope, because it's Dovin's freaking veto. Okay, two pain lands. And the opponent is chillin'. Are we going to chill back? Or are we going to try to resolve our Rafine? I think we have to push it. We have to try to resolve something. So is it worth having an untapped land here? May as well. You never know what you're playing around in this format. Sensor is out there. If they counter it, we can try to play it again next turn. Okay, growth spiral in response. Into another pain land. I could go for damage now or build up Rafine. It looks like they're going to resolve Niv next turn, but we have a Heartless Act for that. Let's do damage now. Denik. Let's stick with the damage now plan. This is going to have to be a fast game. We can't hang with Niv, but this is so painful. Look at the pain lands. We have Binding. If they take out the Rafine, we just play it again. 
And that's what they're going to do. Okay. I would have killed the yes pirate, but you know, there is that commander bias in this format. A few options. Holding up counter magic here, we might be able to just win protecting this card. So this turn is six, next turn is seven. That's a point short of lethal, but we can power up the cave of the frost dragon. So our new plan is protect our new ally, been our rival for so long, Luminar Cast Pirate. And then swing in with Cave and end this game after countering whatever they do with this turn. They have a World Tree, so they no longer have to take Pain, but we have a Spell Pierce. They didn't even stay to see the untapped land. They're out of here. Phyrexia's power continues to grow as it prepares to take over the multiverse and make everything one. All pre-orders for Phyrexia All Will Be One products will sweeten the deal with an all-new exclusive CGB Dragon token. Every single sealed product, commander deck, bundle, everything that's coming with the new set gets upgraded with a CGB token for free. Get your pre-orders in and become complete with Phyrexia All Will Be One. CoolStuffInc.com, cool stuff in stock.